Perhaps you live by the mentality, or maybe you have been raised with the mentality, especially if you're from Texas, that bigger is better. Have you ever lived that way before? The bigger car, the bigger house, um, the bigger your wallet, maybe, or what's in your bank account, is better. Uh, But we come to find that that's not always true. Um, Sometimes better gifts are in small packages. Um, It used to be, and I'm not lying to you, um, maybe a couple decades back, if someone were to ask you, what was the best hamburger in town? Some people may have said McDonald's because they sold over 100 million burgers. They have to be good. They've sold that many. These have to be amazing burgers. Anyone ever say that before, that the best burger in town is McDonald's? No? 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 Maybe? I don't know. I like McDonald's burger. I wouldn't say they're the best. I could probably think of more. Um, but, but right now, they stop counting. They're at billions and billions, right? Um, back in 94, they're like, we just don't even know anymore. Let's, let's just go with billions and billions. Um, but but that's, that was the mentality, that the, the more you had and sold, the, the better your franchise was. And Jesus came into um, the realm of history and said, that's really not the way it is. And he flipped tables, as we have found so many times before. Um, But back in Jesus's day, if you think things are turbulent now with, um, you know, with every current events, with Republicans, Democrats, you name whatever is going on in the media, just think of how it was back in Jesus's day. It was was 10 times more conflict at the time. The Jewish people um, were under captivity by the biggest empire ever known uh, to to humanity called the Romans. And they were thinking, okay, God, when are you coming down? And they had this idea of the kingdom of heaven. And it was going to come, and it was going to wipe out these, these Romans that, that took over everything, and, and we're going to see God glorified through the chosen people. Um, but when, when is this going to happen? What is this going to look like? And they had all these different ideas going around by different groups of, of people saying, no, the kingdom of God is coming here and here, and, and, and this is what it's going to look like. And so they had these, have you, if you ever heard the people, the Pharisees, they're, they're uh, religious leaders, and, and they thought the kingdom would come and when it would come um, by adhering to the law of Scripture, they said, if, if only we had enough good Jews out there that would, that would read the, the Torah and actually go through the scriptures and, and be good Jews, then that's when the kingdom of God is going to come. That's when the kingdom of heaven is going to come. You, you, you just got to pay attention to the laws. And then there was these group of people called the Zealots, if you've heard of them. They think that, that Jews with just enough faith and enough swords could overthrow the Romans. It doesn't matter how small the people were, that God was on their side and they could win back um, their, their freedom by just using the sword against the Romans. Um, and that will bring about the kingdom of God through them and through some swords. And then you had another group of people, I'll, I'll call them observers, they weren't called observers, but they looked at the signs of the times, uh, things going on in nature, clues from prophecy, from the scriptures, like looking at m- movements and uprisings and, and comets that flew by, astronomical phenomenons, uh, just the lining of stars and saying, this is when God is going to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, once these signs line up in place. And maybe Maybe you've seen that before, and, and if you've known people that are really big into the book of, of Revelation, that, that can like count, like, this is this many periods from this uh, word here, and that's the exact date that Jesus is going to return. But these are kind of like these people looking at, at the prophecy saying, okay, this is when the stars are going to align and God's kingdom is going to finally come. But they were all in conflict. There was this big dividing thing. And so all of a sudden, they get this catch wind of this person that comes, that people are saying, this is the Messiah. This is the person we've been waiting for. This is what all the prophecy is pointing to. This person's going to bring about the kingdom of God. And these people that have been so oppressed by the Romans, they're they're about ready to to believe this person. They come up to him and they ask him, they say, okay, when's this kingdom coming? What's God's kingdom going to look like? And once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees and when, when the kingdom of God was coming, Jesus answered saying, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. It's not in the alignment of stars or stuff like that. Nor will they say, look, there it is. You can tell by this sign. Or look, there it is over there. But in fact, the kingdom of God is already among you. 
And they probably look at him like, oh, what's he talking about? I still see the Roman soldiers over there. Where's God's mighty sword to smite all these people? Did I say sword? Sword. Where, where, just seeing if you're paying attention. Um, but where is, where is God's sword to smite these people? And, and Jesus replied, you know, and then he went on to this long uh, list of the kingdom of God is like. And one of them, he says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And people are probably taken back by that. Like, what is this guy talking about? This is the one we've been waiting for, and he's saying the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed? Who is this guy? And, he, and Jesus said, and this is probably a mustard seed that was just one of the smaller seeds at the time um, that Jesus knew about. And if you think about Christianity, it started with just a small movement of people. And it started with just sharing the word and sharing the good news. And then Paul got a hold of it after encountering Christ. And then it spread. And then Constantine made it part of the, or Emperor Constantine made it part of of the empire. And then it just grew and grew and grew. And this small little thing grew to be what it is today. Because you're here today, a part of this kingdom. But we all get confused. They're like, well, kingdom of God, isn't that after we die? Or kingdom of heaven, isn't that after we die? Um, and then we'll, we'll, the only time you really see kingdom of heaven is, is in Matthew's text because Matthew uses um, the word heaven instead of God because his audience was primarily a, a Jewish audience. And they rarely said the name of God, Yahweh, or the Tetragrammatron, as they called it. They, they just said um, Elohim, and sometimes they don't even say Elohim. So he, would, he just transferred it to the kingdom of heaven, and that's why he says it all over Matthew. But we get confused. So what is this kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God? Do you guys ever wrestle with that before? And Jesus says, it's already among you. Just the size of a mustard seed. And Jesus would always use terms um, that were relevant to the people at the time. He used a lot of agricultural things because they had a lot of farmers back then. He used a lot of fishing terms because there was a lot of fisher people out there at the time. Um, Nowadays, he'd probably use something like the kingdom of heaven is like a microchip or something incredibly small. I don't know what Jesus would say, but he'd, something small, think about it. A tic-tac? I don't know. You, you think about it. It would, it would work. Um, when I was a kid, I, I remember there was this tree out in front of my, my house um, whose roots uprooted the concrete. So there was like, it, back in my brain as a, as a tiny little kid just learning how to ride a bike, this jump that mi- let me soar 500 feet into the air. In my brain, Okay. Um, but I remember thinking, like, wow, that tree used to be a tiny seed. And then just over time, it just grew to even the point where the concrete could not stop it. And I just thought of when it was a seed, there's no way one seed could have even done anything to this concrete. It would have just smashed it. But after time and growth and growth and growth, the concrete could not even contain it. Just a small little thing in time can do miraculous things. Think about the small moments God puts in your life every single day that you think, this, this isn't really anything. This is just an interaction. This doesn't really mean anything. Maybe we just go through the motions not thinking God puts something small in our life that could actually make a huge impact on other people and in your own life. I remember when I was a kid, and I showed this picture last week, and it was just too cute not to share again. Am I right? <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. I'm just jealous of when I had hair. Come on. I just wanted to show it again. Um, but I remember when I was a kid, I was reading um, the, the second scripture. They used to have the kids come up and read from the Old Testament or the, the New Testament before the gospel. And I went up. This was my first time. I was pretty nervous, and I read. And I got up there and said, this is from the book of Philippians, the third chapter. And it's Philippians, and I was just laughing, and I struggled my way through it, struggled through every single word. And when I got done off of, of the pulpit and came down, I remember my, my teacher, my Sunday school teacher, just patted me on the shoulder and said, I cannot wait for you to be a pastor someday. <laughs> and I looked at her, I'm like, you're crazy, lady. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but that was just a seed planted in me as a kid that could even pronounce um, Philippians, you know, from a Sunday school teacher. So what, what are these little seeds that you are planting, these little kingdom impact seeds that you think don't even matter, but they have life, kingdom impact consequences? I remember uh, in high school, um, I, was a, 
a sophomore at the time, and this junior uh, befriended me. And he was just like this really cool guy, um, just really popular with everyone. And we, we were friends. And I remember we were talking one day, and he said, hey, I'm going to grab some Taco Bell. You want some Taco Bell? It's my treat. And I'm like, great. And I didn't have money at that time, so Taco Bell, great. And I just remember getting this whole big thing of, of tacos, and we just ate it in his car in the parking lot. And he shared with me his whole story about things I learned in church my entire life, but the way he shared them with me were new to me for the very first time, how this relationship with Jesus thing happened and how, how walking with Jesus is totally different than, than just going to church on a Sunday, that it was a life-changing thing, that the way you do life is different when Jesus is actually in your life and you're walking with Jesus. And I remember, like, this he was a popular kid. There's no reason for him to like even be hanging out with me, except he wanted to share this story with me on how Jesus transformed his life. And that was just a small thing he did that changed who, the direction of who I was. Think about the small seeds planted in your life and why you are here. What are the mustard seed moments that brought you here today? And how do you, therefore, in turn, um, plant those seeds in others? Perhaps you've never heard of this guy. Um, anyone ever heard of, hear of this guy before? I don't think so. No, I, I didn't either. Maybe you did. His name's Edward Kimball. Um, he was a Sunday school teacher. Didn't really do too, wasn't really known for too, too much after that. Um, but he, the reason I'm lifting him up is he was very passionate about his students. Incredibly passionate. There was a story about how one of his students just got fed up with this whole Bible message thing, and um, some stories say he even cursed as he left the room. And Edward was so passionate about his kids, um, just, just seeing God and seeing Jesus in the heart of Jesus, that he went to this kid's work one day, he worked at a shoe store, and he shared with him how much Jesus loved him and what it meant to have a relationship with Jesus and walk with Jesus. And this this. This thing that he, and Edward Kimball was known as this very shy guy, and there's a story about how he just kind of paced back and forth and never really wanted to go inside the, the shoe store because he was too nervous to go inside and talk to this kid, but his heart led him to do it. And this kid ended up falling in love with Jesus and became someone known as D.L. Moody. Maybe you've never heard of him either, but he, 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 he created uh, this big Bible church, Moody Bible Church and the Bible Institute that, that sent out tons of missionaries and trained people on the ways of being, um, sharing Jesus with others. Um, and this person had a huge ministry. In fact, it impacted um, someone known as Wilbur Chapman. Maybe you've heard of him, a huge evangelist. And part of his ministry impacted this great evangelist called Billy Sunday. And Billy Sunday came to know Jesus through Wilbur. And Billy Sunday, he's the guy who coined the phrase, going to church doesn't make you a Christian just like standing in a garage doesn't make you a Christian. You know, have you heard that before? That's from Billy Sunday. And Billy's ministry was so big, it impacted this person called uh, Mordecai Ham. And you have to be Christian if your name is Mordecai. But he came to Christ um, through Billy Sunday. And then all of a sudden, maybe, maybe you've never heard of this guy either, but this ministry, this, this guy was so impacted by this, this, this guy preaching from a tent in North Carolina one day. He was so impacted, he came back the next week to, or the next day to hear him preach again. And this guy's name was Billy Graham. And all of this was possible through a small seed planted by a Sunday school teacher that wanted someone to know that Jesus loved them. So if you think the small seeds you're planting in people's lives don't matter, I'm telling you they do. They absolutely do. So what are your mustard seed moments, church? What are the people that God is calling you to make? God, is that you? <laughs> what is, hello? <laughs> it's him. Um, <laughs> so think, let's, let's think about that. What are the moments that we just take as a mundane moment that was, is something that can just go through the motions and God is calling you to say, no, no, plant these mustard seeds that can make a kingdom impact here on earth. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much um, just for being present. Uh, we, we feel you and we hear you this morning. Uh, we pray that you can just guide us into these moments and help us not close our eyes to them, um, but know that we are planting seeds for your kingdom and that you work in even the smallest of things. And we pray this all in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen.